Hello lovely witches. So I'm back and I'm back for a, a My Witchy Life update. And I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Um, don't know. But this is going to be a, um, <laughs> an overshare. <laughs> this is going to be an overshare, you know, too much information, meltdown life thing. So, today is um, the 12th. Today's the 12th of November. Uh, and it's a Sunday. It's a good place to start. And next weekend, I will not be in my 30s anymore. Because on Friday of this week, um, I will be 40. And I just, I don't know. I just don't know, this is the truth. Um, and it's funny how, I remember being 30, you know, in the dark distant depths of time. And my girls were, oh God, uh, a year. My, my youngest two, my twins were a year old. So I do remember being 30 as much as anybody remembers being 30 with a year old, two, two two year old, two one year olds. And I didn't have time to worry about it. And I was so convinced I was gonna be kind of easy with this one, you know. But I'm, I'm starting to get the anxiety. I'm starting to get the nerves. I'm starting to feel a bit flat. Which is dumb, which is a whole load of dumb. So, so, so yeah, so the basics of it is, is I'm 40 on Friday and next weekend I won't be in my 30s anymore and I'm feeling a bit crazy about that. So I've been thinking and I've been taking some kind of quiet time and time just reconnecting with myself and, you know, goddess and, and all that kind of thing. And I, th I think it's really easy in the world that we live in now, which, you know, seems to be getting a little bit scarier every day. I think it's really easy to think that we have to set ourselves these, these huge big bucket lists. And because of the world we live in and the media and social media and all the rest of it, we get this kind of force-fed notion of what a bucket list should be. And actually that's unfair because I'm being massively generic and you know maybe everybody else doesn't do that maybe it is just me so I've watched a few videos just lately about kind of being 40 and how other how other women take it and how they deal with it and one of the videos I watched oh she was this sweet girl and I I won't tag her in the link because because I wouldn't want to upset her if she saw this. So I watched this video with this really sweet girl and she didn't have her first child until she was 38 and you know she really thought that 40 was being okay and she's got a bucket list and she wants to um, go to Vietnam and take a trip to Disneyland and you know rent a RV and you know drive across America and and she wants to da -da 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 travel this and she wants to that and and in the next breath, she's like, you know, and I know this will never happen, but, but one day it will happen. And I'm watching this video of this sweet, sweet girl. And I just kind of thought, I'm a bit like that. I have these kind of crazy notions, which is okay, you know. <laughs> I have these crazy notions of things that I'd like us to do as a, as a family. You know, me and my husband as a couple, and then me on my own as an individual. And they're really kind of, some of them are really personal to me and others are just kind of generic, the things that you, you should want to do, you know, you, you should want to go to Victoria Falls, you should want to go to Niagara. I do want to do those things, but are they things that are, you know, if I, if I had a day, one day left, would those things be on my list or would the last thing on my list, you know, be a roast dinner and a glass of wine with my family. So, 
So it's got me to thinking. And it's also got me to looking at the past year and how kind of being on YouTube has really helped me to kind of bring all the bits of my life together. And back in January, I made a video, my first one for this channel. And um, I've taken it down. I've taken it down now. I'm not entirely sure why I've taken it down, but I did, I took it down a few months back. And it was the first one of the, the YouTube Hagen Challenge. And um, I just, I don't, I think, I, I think, see, I'm working my emotions through on YouTube, crazy. I think the reason I took it down is because I don't feel like that anymore. In just, in just a few short months, the idea that this whole, this whole piece of my life, this massive big part of me, I don't feel like I have to keep that hidden anymore. It's not something I'm gonna run out and shove in people's faces, but it isn't something that I feel like I need to hide away and protect in case other people don't like it, in case other people disagree with it. Now, now don't get me wrong, there's been a kind of a shift in the circumstances with my family where one of the reasons I was in the broom closet was because of my children. And that situation is kind of sorting itself out without me doing anything. I suppose, you know, my oldest is 15 in the summer and, you know, he, he has this wonderful outlook whereby he just really isn't concerned by the opinions of others. More power to him. And my, my girlies are just kind of finishing junior school here, primary school, you know, middle school, that kind of thing, before they go up to, to senior school next September. And now I'm not on the playground anymore which is bliss. Now I'm not on the playground anymore. Um, those kind of opinions of those bitchy women, I mean, they didn't matter anyway. It was only the damage that they'd do to my little people. So it just, I feel like I'm coming full circle. I feel like I'm kind of really close to being able to blend all the bits of my life together. Not some huge, great big crazy reveal or anything like that, but but yeah, just, you know, oh, this is me. I've got a YouTube channel over there or and here. And, and if people stumbled across it now, I, I don't, I, other than mild embarrassment, you know, oh God, did I look like a mess? That kind of thing. Other than mild embarrassment, appalling filming skills or something. I don't, I don't really think I'd have an issue, you know, my my thoughts and opinions and belief systems are mine and that's that and that's kind of that, isn't it? And I don't know whether I feel like this because I'm getting to the stage where I'm getting to the age where other people's opinions just don't don't matter. I mean, unless you, unless I love you. What, who, who is it? Who is it that says, is it Arwen that says, that nah, it's Ember, unless, you know, I'm, I'm in love with you and you pay half my bills. And this is the true fact. And this is, a, this is it. You know, the people that are here in my house with me, they're the ones that count. And they don't judge me. So, so in light of all kinds of political crap over here in the UK and in lights of all kinds of political crap that I know you're all struggling with over there in the US. I kind of think that although we perhaps need to be a bit careful, we also now need to be strong for each other, for everybody else. And I mean, the safety pin movement has been running here since Brexit. And it kind of feels like, I don't know if you remember, um, in Sydney, in Australia, um, in the coffee shop. I don't know if you remember it all happening and we've got friends in Australia and everyone was tagging up the I'll Ride With You campaign, the hashtag about I'll Ride With You. 
and the safety pin, the safety pin that everybody's wearing at the moment, we, we did it over here after Brexit, it feels like it's born out of the same, the same motion, the same movement. And it just goes to show for me that there are far more nicer, tolerant types of us out there than not. And wow, I think I'm going to get a bit controversial. And even in light of the, the Brexit vote and the Trump vote, even though they were kind of sweeping numbers of figures, I think that it's also worth bearing in mind that some people will have voted, not because they were voting for Trump, Farage, Johnson. They weren't voting for intolerance. Some of them were voting literally because they had no other choice. And I've got friends and family members on both sides of the pond that have, that have, that have ended up going that way because they were so afraid that voting for the status quo was just as bad. And, you know, we had to make tough decisions and here in the UK this year, and I think that it's worth bearing in mind that people had to make tough decisions in the US too. And when you see this, it happened here. I mean, Facebook just became a glory hole of hate. And that's terrible. And I've seen a few posts from other witches on my on my Facebook page that they're going back in the back in the closet. They're going back in the broom closet. They're taking their Facebook profiles down. They're protecting their family. It's the only way they feel safe. And I, and I get that. I do. I get that for them. But but we also can't can't let hate chase us away. We also can't let hate make other people afraid of us because we're a minority like any other and I think as long as we stay true and calm and kind it it will it will show it will shine and so and so it seems my my little overshare has probably helped me to understand that I am worried about being 40. But I am also feeling the pressure of kind of a crazy world. But, you know, like the tower card, we have to shake our foundations. You know, we can't build, we can't build strong homes on the sand. And maybe this is, maybe this is what this is all about the Brexit here, Trump there, maybe what it's all about. Maybe these people are, are the, the resistance, if you like. Who is it that said, um, oh, Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield says, most of us have two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. And between these two stands resistance. And I wonder if, the way that we've always functioned, you know, within the system is one life and the life that we want to get to in the future as a, as a country, as a society where we are super tolerant is the other life. And maybe this voting system in between us, the way it's all gone so kind of horribly awful, maybe that's the resistance. Maybe this is what we're fighting against. And I don't mean with violence and with hatred but maybe these maybe these two political decisions are what we've got to overcome maybe I don't know my four-legged creatures want to come in and seemingly that is a symbol for me to shut up so I, I'm going to go and cease my somewhat crazy probably controversial wild ramble it was lovely to talk to you lovely YouTubing people um, and I will see you later, witches. Bright blessings. <laughs>